I thought that because you finished so quickly before Guyana that you'll get an oil field. <laughs> I think that we, we will take one more speech before lunch, and we'll probably, probably try and have, a, have one hour for lunch, the best as possible. So, my friend from Guyana, your, your combatant for peace, you will come before lunch, and your dear friend and other combatant for peace will come after lunch, and between both of you, there will be Suriname. Suriname will, will be the first after lunch. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. I want to thank uh, my colleague from St. Lucia for giving me his safe time, and thank uh, President Maduro for giving, he, giving me his seven minutes in exchange for my love. It is indeed an honor for me to join you in the beautiful island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I wish at the outset, as a member of the CARICOM family, to take this opportunity to acknowledge and congratulate the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for its leadership role and commendable stewardship of the presidency of the pro tempore secretariat over the last year. And I ask us to give them a big round of applause. <laughs> St. Vincent and the Grenadines has done our region proud in guiding the work of CELAC over the past year. In particular, with our engagement with the EU in July 2023, after a hiatus of several years. Guyana was pleased to host the meeting of the CELAC Ministers of Agriculture held in Georgetown in June 2023. Excellencies, I believe that we must focus our attention on certain key areas if we are to find viable solution to the common challenges faced by our region. Firstly, our commitment to the peace and stability of this region must remain paramount. Latin America and the Caribbean must remain a zone of peace. The never-ending war in Ukraine and the unceasing bombing of Gaza are senseless acts of aggression and inhumanity which have consumed the efforts of the international community to find ways in which the citizens of Ukraine and Palestine can be relieved of their suffering. But so far, to no avail. We must never allow the peoples of this region to be subjected to such actions. The genocide in Palestine must come to an end and hostages held must be returned. It is in this vein that Guyana accepted the offer of my colleague, Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, and my other CARICOM colleagues, the President of Brazil, Lula da Silva, and the UN as an observer to facilitate a dialogue with His Excellency President Maduro, with His Excellency President Maduro last December to address the tensions that had arisen between our two states. I assured everyone at that time and now that I am prepared and continue to be prepared to speak with President Maduro on any aspect that may contribute to enhancing the relationship between our two countries. The aspect <laughs> relating to Venezuela's claim to the Esquibo is before the International Court of Justice, and the Joint Declaration of Argyle on Dialogue and Peace acknowledges that Guyana is committed to the process and procedure of the International Court of Justice for the resolution of the border controversy. We are prepared to accept the judgment of the Court on this matter. I can assure you that Guyana remains steadfast in its commitment to the international judicial process, as well as maintaining our region as a zone of peace. We want peace. We want prosperity for our neighbors and all in this region. We want to be our brother's keeper with our neighbor. Instead of drawing conclusions, states within the region must ascertain the facts. Statements 
that are not based on facts can only add to destabilization. As we heard this morning from our friends in Bolivia, the air surveillance and sea exercise mentioned by Bolivia were part of a bilateral and regional security cooperation and had nothing to do with Guyana and Venezuela controversy. It is also important to note that no mention was made about incursion of Guyana territorial space. My commitment to this August body is that Guyana and everything we do will be built on peace and our fundamental values as Guyanese and Guyana are based on peace. We are a peaceful people. Fairness is standing on a platform of principle, honesty, and values, nothing else. We are blessed to have President Lula, the silver back with us. We look to your principle and honest leadership to shape this region on a path to progress and prosperity. I assure all leaders that all leaders here that Guyana's priority is peace. And you can have the confidence that our territory will never ever be used as a platform for war or to promote war. <laughs> Secondly, CELAC can play a pivotal role in seeking to address issues that impact the sustainable development of the region, just as climate change, energy security, and food and nutrition security. Climate change and extreme weather conditions, as we are aware, have begun to put world's food production and global food security at risk. The prognosis has been made worse by the effects of the pandemic. Guyana, as lead in CARICOM on this initiative, continues to advocate for food and nutrition security in the region. My government welcomes collaborative efforts and partnerships in a retooling effort to build the necessary capacity to meet the rising need for expertise in advancement of this sector. Guyana, like many other countries represented here today, is cognizant of the disproportionate exposure to the harmful effects of climate change on many of our local industries. Our low-lying coastal plain is subject to flooding from both the rising sea and the increased intensity of rainfall. The government has embarked on the implementation of a low carbon development strategy, which focuses on forests, climate, and other ecosystem services, stimulation of future growth through clean energy and sustainable economic activities, protection against climate change and alignment of the country's economic and social policies with global climate goals. Ghana reiterates its call for the fulfillment of financial commitments needed to address and support climate mitigation, adaptation, and loss and damage, especially in vulnerable countries. On climate finances, we must be collectively proud of the work of our sister, of our sister Prime Minister Motley, and I applaud her. This leads me to the third key objective, the preservation of our forests and the important role of forests in climate mitigation and adaptation, including through reducing emissions by, from deforestation and forest degradation. I believe that CELAC must galvanize its advocacy for the sustainable management of forests and the conservation and enhancement of forest carbon stocks, red plus processes and other policy approaches as decided by the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And therefore, most appreciative of the invitation extended by His Excellency President Lula da Silva for Guyana to present to the G20 in July of this year our model for the preservation of the forest. A model that Guyana would be happy to present to member states of CELAC at the earliest possible opportunity. Excellencies, we have had the advantage of developing strategies 
partnerships with third countries and external regional groupings. With the necessary political will, there is scope for revolutionizing the way we interact with these states and regional groupings to ensure that our mutual interests can be pursued and we're able to harness the potential of our respective resources, both human and economic capital, channeling them into effective projects and programs that focus on our collective development. I want to applaud again President Lula's vision of the infrastructural integration of our region. The government of Guyana remains committed to the diversification of our economic and investors' portfolio, placing emphasis, emphasis on the traditional sectors while developing new and emerging ones. We'd also like to encourage more companies to explore investment opportunities in areas such as agri-tech, eco-tourism, the construction industry, pharmaceuticals, and renewable energy. We are creating an enabling environment conducive to the generation of trade and investment opportunities. The framework for advancing cooperation within the grouping is highly valued by Guyana, and it provides avenue for enhanced development and convergence on issues in areas of our collective interest. <laughs> Excellencies, in closing, let me reiterate my appreciation to my colleague, Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, for his for the outstanding hosting of this summit and, a, and for his astute leadership. I wish to assure His Excellency, Her Excellency, President Castro, President of the Republic of Honduras, of my full support as she assumed the role of the pro tempore presidency. Guyana stands firmly committed to the community of Latin America and the Caribbean states. I look forward to working with you all in preserving the fabric of this integration mechanism. The, collection, the collective co commitment of all of us to international law, the safety and security of our people and region, the safeguard of democracy and the human and the upliftment of the dignity of all our people is paramount. In closing, I repeat our call for the dismantling of the unacceptable embargo against our sister CARICOM state of Cuba, of Caribbean state of Cuba. The economic and political aggression must come to an end, and the designation of Cuba as a state sponsor of terrorism must also come to an end. I thank you, and God bless all of you. <laughs>